Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today I'm going to tell you another story, but today I'm going to tell you a story that really isn't even mine to tell. I'm going to tell you the story of Tim's world record spotted bass. I'm going to give it to you from my perspective. Uh, it was truly an amazing day, but there was a lot that led up to that day. And that's really what I want to tell you guys about. Because what these stories are doing, what this is allowing us to do, is share the entire bass fishing experience with you guys. The things we've learned, the reason that we do this in the first place came out of all of these stories and these experiences. That's where the drive came to share bass fishing with all of you. So today we're going to talk about the current world record IGFA certified spotted bass. That day, you know what, I think we'll probably start at that day and then we'll go backward in time. That morning, Tim and I were headed to Bullard's Bar. Now, there's nowhere up there to stay. People that come in from out of town, I think, don't see that coming. I mean, it, it's in the boonies, man. There's nothing out there, very limited cell reception. So we were about an hour and a half away, staying at his in-law's house, sleeping on the floor. We actually hadn't been to the lake in over a month and a half. You know, people have this vision that we're there like six days a week. And at times, we had been. We had put in unbelievable amounts of time on this lake, uh, had tangled with some truly giant fish. I guess neither one of us has ever really, I mean, I don't want to call it dirty laundry, but, but for the sake of this, we'll say aired our dirty laundry. You guys don't even know that we have had significantly bigger fish on. We've had world records denied prior to this one. We never even bothered to talk about it. Multiple world records that didn't make it through the process. Uh, but that is part of it. People don't understand on the surface that when you catch a big bass, that doesn't mean you have a world record. There is this giant leap between having a huge fish and having a world record fish. Uh, having a world record means that you have caught a bass that one is the, big, the biggest bass of that species, but two, you have done it in such a way that it is beyond reproach, that there is no question that everything from the catch to your gear, to the witnesses, to the way it was handled, to the way the fish was treated, that everything was perfect. That is a world record. They're not the same thing. So we had caught some giant fish. We had thought that we had some world records, uh, but it just didn't pan out. But on this day, it panned out. So that morning, we're at Tim's in-law's house about an hour and a half away. We wake up early and I'm sleeping on the floor. Tim's sleeping on the couch. To start this off, to set the mood for this event, the reason we're going to Bullard's Bar this day is because it's my birthday. Uh, we wake up. I roll over, I'm laying on the floor trying to get my wits about me and Tim, now we're in somebody else's house, right? So he whispers across the room. He's like, hey Matt, do you know what day it is? And I'm thinking, yeah, it's my birthday. Now, before I tell you what he actually says, you have to understand that Tim and I have been friends a long time. We've been business partners for a long time, but we've been friends longer. And when you're on a boat with us and there's nobody around and there's no cameras on, it is brutal. You think, you think we're harsh when the cameras are running? Man, it's out of control when the cameras are turned off. We are just at it all the time. So I'm like, in my head, I'm like, yeah, man, it's my birthday. He's like, today is the day that I catch a world record spot and ruin your birthday forever. That's the way our day starts. No joke. I'm sitting there. I'm not even sure I responded to him. I'm just in my head. I'm like, you punk. And we are headed to Bullard's. That could be exactly where this day is going. So we get up, we load up, we're goofing off all morning. We're driving to the lake. And I, I don't know what it was about this day. Maybe it's because it was my birthday that we weren't as intense as normal. Because normally we were like on it. Like gear is dialed, hooks are sharpened, everything is ready to rock. We're up early, we're at the ramp, we're going. This day we stopped and got gas on the way to the lake. 
We stopped at a coffee shop. We got breakfast burritos. We hang out talking to the barista at the coffee shop about fishing. And it was ridiculous. We got up at like 5.30 in the morning. I swear we didn't get to the lake. I don't even know what time it was, but it felt like it was like 9.30, 10. I mean, we screwed around. It took forever to get to the lake, but we finally get there. We put the boat in the water. Now, once we're on the water, it's a different deal, right? Once we're on the water, we're like, it's game time. You need to be on point. We're gonna get this done. So we put the boat in the water, we start running. We pull up on our first spot, and we spend a lot of time there on our electronics, uh, just looking, just seeing what's out there. So we looked at our first spot, didn't look like much, cruised to our second spot, and as we're coming up on the spot, we're looking at the graph, and there's two arches. For you guys that have electronics, you know that that means there's two fish down there. So we see two fish on the graph, and uh, we're looking at those, and, and we're both like, yeah, I think we should fish here. Let's do it. If there's two down there, you know, there, there could be more off the sonar, but there's at least two down there, so let's do this. So we shut the boat down. We position the boat. We both get our gear ready. We haven't even made a cast yet. Get all our gear ready. We both fire out in the direction of those two fish, and then we wait for our baits to go to bottom. We both start fishing. We're just both standing side by side up on the front deck, just fishing, and I get bit. A whack, I stick this fish. No sooner do I stick mine, and this happens a lot with spotted bass, they trigger each other. The small ones bite first, and then the big ones just get revved up in the mix. So I stick mine, whack, and here comes Tim. Whack, sticks his too, doubled up. I start reeling mine in, fighting it, Tim's fighting his. Mine starts coming to the boat. I get up, it's a three pound spot, which is no slouch. But mine's coming to the boat, Tim's is not coming to the boat. So I get mine, dump her, pick up the net, and then starts the waiting game. You know, I'm like, <whistles> Tim's just battling this fish. Time's passing. Finally, she comes up and we're like, oh, that's a big one. That's a, that's a really good fish. Because once spotted bass get past, I don't know, eight pounds, they all just start looking huge, right? And it's, it's a miracle, it's a blessing that we have been able to see enough of those fish to, to have had that experience where they start blending, uh, but they, they really do. You can tell that they're really long, you can tell that they're really fat, but the difference from like a nine to a 10 in the water is very, very hard to see. But uh, in all seriousness, that's a big leap. But right there where they get giant, and all you know is they're huge, that's, it's hard to tell. So he gets that fish up and we're like, oh, that's one of them. That's a big one right there. So he's fighting it, trying not to lose it, because right at the net is where things can go wrong. You've got the shortest line out, you're getting antsy, you wanna pull it to the net, you wanna try and gun for it with the net, that's where things can go wrong. So you're really, that's where you gotta just, you gotta calm yourself down, play that fish just like you're in the first five seconds of the fight, not like you're in the last five, and finally, we get the net under that fish. I pull that fish, set her on the deck of the boat, and you guys have seen our net. I mean, it's, it's freaking huge, right? So when they're in the net, you can't really tell much. The net's so deep, you can hardly even see them. So I take that thing, I flop it on the deck, and we both look into the net, and that's when we're like, oh man, that might do it. And it just, the shock, that set in. I don't think either one of us spoke for 20 seconds. I mean, it felt like an hour, right? But probably 20 seconds, we're both just staring in the net. And you're just, at least for me, you're replaying other catches. How close we've come. Big fish that we've lost at the net. Big fish that have come off. Fish that we thought were right there, but they weren't quite the world record. You're looking in that net and you're like, I, I think this might be it. I think this might do it. So Tim gets a hold of the fish. I just immediately get the scale. Just right off the bat, we just hang her right there in the boat. We want to know what this fish weighs. And she's bouncing because we're in the boat, but she's for sure a mid-10. And that's when we're, I mean, just thrown for a loop. We got that fish in the live well because the first thing you want to do is make sure that fish is taken care of. So we got that fish in the live well. And then the shock set in, you know, we're, we're just, nobody was even talking. We're stunned. We're like, here we are. We've got a real shot at the world record. 
Tim's got this fish in the boat. She's in the live well. It's no more of this, almost. It's no more close call. We've got a fresh shot at a world record. And then the next thing that hit, at least for me, the next thing that hit was this eerie, is it over? Like we had pushed so hard for so long. We had set a goal of catching that world record spotted bass. We were sleeping on the boat. I mean, day after day after day, tangling with big fish, learning this fishery, learning these fish. For me, coming from the swim bait in, Tim was way better at finesse fishing. So I really had to learn my finesse fishing as we went. Uh, we So much had gone into this. And there was a moment there where I'm like, is it really over? Did, did we just do it? Is this, is this the end? Now what? I thought we set some life goal and we might be there. Uh, and then the instinct kicked in. You know, then we're like, well, it's not over yet. Catching a giant fish has happened. Catching a world record has not happened yet. We need to get from A to B. We need to get this paperwork right. We need to get this fish taken care of. We need to get our ducks in a row. So the first thing we did was the weighing process. Uh, we had learned that one the hard way. We had had a record denied uh, over weighing the fish incorrectly. So I got that boat up on the bank, just picked a calm spot on the lake, ran over, found a calm spot, beached the boat, uh, hopped out, got the weight. We knew how we were looking there. And then we were just, we were stressed, man. <laughs> we're like, we don't want to do it wrong. So we put her back in the live well, we ran to where we had reception and we started calling IGFA, the International Game Fish Association. Those are the people that make all the record keeping decisions. Uh, and we got a secretary and we're like, hey, we need to talk to whoever is in charge of records. Uh, we need, to, we need to, to talk to him right now. And she's like, yeah, no problem. Patches us through to his voicemail. So we leave a voicemail and we're literally just bobbing around at the boat at this point. We're like, okay, let's look at the paperwork. And we, we had prepared. So when you're in the moment, it's insane. It's so easy to do things wrong, but there's so much you can do ahead of time too. We had two sets of certified scales on the boat. We had the entire IGFA world record submission packet in the boat. We had everything. All the paperwork was right. We knew who to talk to. Our scales were done. The hard things were done. We just had to make sure we didn't miss anything. So we call IGFA again, because we're just floating around just waiting. We call them again, we get the same lady patched through to voicemail. So we wait like another 15, 20 minutes. Finally, we call back and we're like, before you patch us through, we just want to be clear. We are floating on a lake with a world record in the live well, and we just have some questions. Can you please find us someone to talk to? Uh, and she did, she went and found him. And we got on the phone and we're like, all right, we need to do this, we got that done. This, we got that done. What are we missing, you know? And uh, made sure all our ducks were in a row. And then once that was out of the way, it really set in that yes, this had happened. So Tim called his family uh, and luckily they were in town because we'd been staying at his in-laws. So they were about an hour and a half away and his family actually drove out and we got to that evening. It took some time for them to get there, but we all got to meet up at the lawn ramp. His kids got to see that fish. And it's amazing because when you catch a fish like that, your number one concern is care for that fish, right? You want to take care of that fish. You want a clean release. You want her to go back, not have any long-term problems. Uh, but you also want to share that experience with the people you care about. And normally you don't have the chance to do both, but Tim got to do both. His entire family came out uh, and they all got to experience that fish too. And then we got that clean release and it was absolutely an amazing experience. Uh, and after that, it was a little bit surreal. I mean, we really, we stopped going to the lake. Uh, we're like, what do we do now? I mean, we would joke, it'd be cool if we catch a bigger one, but in all seriousness, we had, we had met our goal and we hadn't set a new goal yet. You know, it, we toyed with it. Do we want to catch a 12 pounder? We know we've hooked big ones. What do we want to do? But we never sat down and we're like concrete new goal is a 12 pound spot. Uh, so we really didn't even go back to the lake for quite a while. Uh, but this year, as you guys know, we do those every year. We talk about our records. We give those records, to, or excuse me, we set our goals for the year. We share those goals with you guys so that you can keep us accountable. You can share your goals with us. We'll keep you accountable. 
One of our goals this year, as you know, Tim and I both said we want to catch a 12 pound spot. Doesn't mean that it's going to happen, but we are going to push hard and try and make it happen. Because with bass fishing, you always want to keep pushing forward, no matter what happens. Even when you're the world record holder, like Tim, there's still that drive. Let's do something different. Let's do something bigger. What can we do? Uh, so we're going to try again, try and get another one, because that was such a big part of our life. We spent so much time on that body of water, staying so quiet. You know, and I do realize that even now, even after time has passed, that I told you we both fired out there. I mentioned the baits. I did not tell you what those are. And the reason for that, we didn't glaze over that by accident. In all seriousness, Tactical Bassin is about sharing everything. That's what we're about. We tell you everything. We do not lie to you. We will give you good, clean information. And this is no different, but we still have a goal for that lake. And the way that we catch those fish is still really important to us. And we're still going to push hard and we're going to try and get to that next level. When the time comes and we tell you what we're doing out there, you will know from the horse's mouth, you heard it all and you heard it straight up. But right now we're still trying to accomplish those goals. So don't think we glazed over that by accident or that we're going to feed you a line. When we tell you, we'll make sure you know what's going on so that you have a, a real shot at those fish. And those fish are there to be caught. Anybody can go up there and pursue them at the same time that we are. And you should, because it's an amazing time when a fishery is at its prime and you have a, a legitimate shot, even if you've never been there at catching a world record. That's an amazing experience. We hope all of you get to experience that just like we did that day. Thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you supporting Tactical Bassin. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. There's gonna be more. We'll talk to you soon.